What's up, everybody? It is right after the Adobe Max keynote, and I wanted to record this video. Actually, I'm doing it the night before because I wanted to give you guys a first look at what's new in Photoshop as of Adobe Max today here on Tuesday in Los Angeles. So let's take a look. So I've got Photoshop open. This is now called Photoshop 2026, for those of you paying attention. And the technical release version is version 27, because I always get that question. So let's go ahead and answer that right off the bat. So you basically go to your Creative Cloud app, download the latest update, make sure it's 27, and then you should have these features based on your geography. So I can't cover every country. All right, so let's start off with one of the biggest new uh, Hallmark features, and that is additions to generative fill. So I'm going to select this photo. I used a different version of this in the keynote. I'm going to go to generative fill, and what's new is not only the ability to choose between Firefly models, but now you have partner models, and I expect this list to continue to grow. We're going to start off with Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana, one of the most popular models because of its ability to maintain character consistency. So here's the problem. We got Jimmy here that I photographed in my studio, and Jimmy loves this pose, but he wished he were facing forward. Now, in the past, that would have meant bringing Jimmy back into the studio because there was no way to do that in the past. There's no way to turn a person even in Photoshop. Well, that has changed. So I'm going to type in a simple prompt, turn him forward, and maintain his hand position. So once I get that prompt in, we'll go ahead and hit generate and let it do its thing. And boom, just like magic, it puts Jimmy on his own layer facing forward. Now, even though it brought up the properties panel with variations, with the partner models, you typically only get one variation. Now, with Jim or with Firefly, you'll still get three, but uh, the Firefly models one and three don't do this kind of character consistency. So here's the before, here's the after. Yes, it did move him. Yes, it did move the artwork down the wall a little bit, but I don't care. I got him turned forward, which is what I really wanted. All right, let's take a different spin on this. Here's another photo of Jimmy in the studio against the black background. We're going to go to select all, and we're going to do the same thing, generative fill, and we're going to type in a different prompt, change the perspective 45 degree, change the perspective to a top-down 45 degree angle. So this is just for fun. I don't really need this shot, but I just want to show off the power of these partner models. And there it is. Cool shot of Jimmy from above, looking down at a 45 degree angle. And you, as you can imagine, you can get these drone type looks for your shots. You can imagine a, a bride and groom in the in in church, and you would never be able to get up that high to get a photograph of them looking down like this. So uh, just very cool to be able to do this. Now, partner models do consume more of your generative credits. So Firefly typically either consumes none or one, and partner models can, might consume 10 or 20 credits depending on the partner model. All right, so let's keep going. Now, this is uh, just another cool example because Generative Fill currently, as of this recording, doesn't have the ability to put a reference image in. So I'm going to handle this a different way. So basically, I just brought in, first of all, I opened up this picture, the stock photo of this model sitting on a stool, and then I just uh, dragged another image in of a clothes laid out on a sheet. Now, I'm going to just make this smaller just so we can see her behind it, but the size doesn't matter. And I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, select all, and same thing, generative fill, and we're going to use Gemini again, and we're going to say, change the clothes of the woman sitting on the stool. I probably don't need to be that descriptive because there's only one woman in the shot, but I can, if there were more than one, I can describe which one I'm talking about. So I was kind of getting in the habit of giving those more detailed prompts. But here we go. And boom, just like that. Now, is it perfect? No. For example, uh, the shoes are not the same as those shoes. Those are original boots. The jeans are changed. The, the sweater's changed. It did not give her a purse. Sometimes it puts a purse in her hand. Sometimes it doesn't. And also didn't do anything with the sunglasses. Sometimes it puts the sunglasses on top of her head. So again, I only get the one variation. I could generate again and try it again if I'm looking for more of those details. Or... Make sure I include those details in the prompt. Be sure to uh, include her shoes and sunglasses and purse so you can get the idea. All right, but that's just amazing that we can do this. Now, those were Gemini models. Let's talk about this example with text. Now, uh, I'm, I don't use Flux 
context that often, but what I hear it's great at is maintaining and changing text. So in this case, I'm gonna switch models to the Flux Context Pro. I'm gonna say change open. I'm doing it all caps, probably don't need to, to closed. And just to be clear that that's what I wanted to do. So we'll let Flux Context Pro have a stab at that one. And like magic, there it is. So you can imagine if you had to manually go in and change those characters piece by piece, the first thing you'd hope for is, okay, there's a E, I'm going to use that. There's an O, I'm going to use that and close. But then the C, the L, the S, and the D, you'd have to make yourself. And it just, boom, change those just like that. All right, let's keep going. So that was uh, uh, using partner models with generative fill. Now we're going to move on to something near and dear to my heart, and that is select subject. Now, and it wasn't that long ago I mentioned that with select subject, if you go to your settings and you go to image processing, um, image processing, there's device and cloud. And it used to say cloud for more precise on device or device for quicker results but the quicker results would often be bad. Like they just wouldn't be as good, I should say, as the cloud. Uh, but now you still get that choice, but notice it doesn't say that anymore. We'll click OK, I'll leave it on device. And I, I've used this example before of this bike. So if you go back and look at my old video, when I would do on device, it would just basically be unusable. There would be so many pieces of the bike missing that I would just basically not be able to use it. But here, even using device, it's done a great job of masking out every little detail, especially when you look at, here's the before, where things are the same color, like the wheels almost the same color as those bricks. There's just so many things that are the same that would have been very hard, if not impossible to do, with a simple one-click remove background. And it is a mask. So you can always go in and work with that mask and tweak it to your heart's content. So that is the new improved on device, select subject and remove background. Now here's another one that's kind of fun to work with. This is the remove tool and it's new enhancement. So I'm gonna to go to the remove tool. I'm gonna to make sure that I have it on generative AI on and I'm gonna say, don't remove after each click. I leave, I leave that turned off because that way in case I miss something, it doesn't start trying to process it and I can go ahead and fill that in. So I'm just gonna circle this backpack. Looks like he might be a food delivery driver. And once I circle it, it will uh, select the whole thing, including his shirt and everything else. But I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and let the remove tool process and remove that area. So first and foremost, it's way faster. Secondly, it did an amazing job of removing that, that backpack. So again, here's before, here's after removing that backpack with just using the remove tool and how much better it is. Also with the remove tool, it works here if we zoom, if we put that back and you use just a regular selection tool. So I'm not going to do it, but let's say I just grabbed it with the rectangular marquee tool. Uh, I would probably use a lasso. You now have the remove button right here in the contextual taskbar, and that will use AI as well. And again, do that much better job. The other thing that's improved with the remove tool and remove um, capability in the con in contextual taskbar is before you might got you might have gotten some substitutions where it, Instead of removing, it puts something new there. And that's been enhanced quite a bit to reduce those to basically none, uh, or at least get it down to as close to none as possible. So you should get far fewer, uh, we call them hallucinations, with the new remove tool capabilities. All right, next up, and this is uh, just kind of a, a quality of life kind of improvement here where we've got some text on a layer here. We got this text, girls just wanna have fun. And there's a brand new button for the text on the contextual taskbar that is called dynamic text. And what dynamic text does is that it basically makes the text all the same width, if it unless even if it has to change the size of the font or the characters. And it's dynamic. So even if I hang on here, let's go ahead and do it this way. There we go. If I make it smaller, make it bigger. Now here, let's go ahead and just add some more text. I'm just trying to demonstrate that it maintains it all. There we go. The time. Notice it keeps making that second line smaller if it has to, to make it all fit. And if I put a manual break in there, again, it just makes everything fill that space and I can continue working with the text. This is what I was trying to do earlier. Uh, I can keep working with that text and it keeps it dynamic. 
So dynamic text, uh, now part of Photoshop. And this you see this look all the time, especially in advertising. All right, uh, next up, let's go to our next one here. And uh, this is a little picture of little Terry a long time ago. I think I was five. This is one of the oldest shots I have of me. Sadly, I don't have anything younger. But in this case, this was an old photo scan. And it's very small. It's only 674 pixels by 956. And I need to make this larger for a print or larger to do something with. So now under image, you have generative upscale. And what's new is not only do you have generative upscale, you have the ability to choose partner models. And one of our favorite, one of my favorite models is using Topaz Gigapixel. You know that standalone thing you can buy? Well, now you can use that. Um, you can also do face recovery and you can choose two to four times. I think the uh, also the maximum size have been changed to eight megapixels. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is eight. And you can also choose between two Topaz models, the as Gigapixel, which is pre for preserving details. That's the one I'll use the most. But if you're trying to be creative, you can use Topaz Bloom to add creative detail. But let's leave it on that one. And when I choose upscale, it'll take a few seconds to, to process that. But just note that it's going to process it into a new image. So you'll have a new window that opens and it will not touch your original. So you still have your original size, your original image. You have a new window with a new image that you can save and do anything you want with. And there it is in the time it took me to explain it. So here's the new window. And also it did add a little bit of retouching to it. So that's a that's a optional, an optional layer you can leave on or turn off. And it kind of softens it up a little bit, does my skin a little bit better. Basically kind of restores this old photo. Still could use Nano Banana or Gemini 2.5 to do the rest of the restoration, but not bad for something built in to Photoshop now using generative upscale. All right, next up, we have an update, and that is the new Harmonize, which was in public beta, has now been moved over to regular Photoshop or in the, what we call the GA version. So I have this, this living room setting here. I'm just going to drag and drop this chair into it and the chair I've already removed the background, but no matter how I place this, it's just going to kind of look like it's floating in midair. And that's where the harmonize button comes in on the contextual taskbar. So I'll just go ahead and click harmonize and we'll let that cook for a second. And boom, I love this. This is your new best friend. If you're a compositor, if you put images together in Photoshop, this just made your life a whole lot easier because it not only put the legs on the floor like they should look, but it also just overall harmonized the, the color, the shadows, the, um, the uh, lightness and darkness of the photo. It just did everything it needed to do and gave me three variations to choose from. I like number three and I like number one. I would probably go with number one. Let me see number three again. Or maybe number three because I kind of like what it's doing here to the wall. So you pick and it can always generate again if you don't like those. So that is the new Harmonize, which again, before, after, is now part of regular Photoshop. It's no longer in the public beta. It is moved over as a uh, release version. All right, next up, I'm just going to go to the home screen. Because in the home screen, there's also something new. And that is you get your generation history if you've been generating things in Firefly. So you can generate things in Firefly and actually open them up right here in Photoshop to continue working on them. So just a quick update to that as well. And next up, we're going to head over to the Photoshop beta because there's one thing I want to talk about here in the beta. So keep in mind, I am now in the Photoshop beta. I'm no longer in Photoshop 2026. This is the public beta that you can download separately from the Creative Cloud app. And I'm going to go into the crop tool. I'm going to click the crop tool. I'm just going to expand my crop out all the way around by holding down my option or alt key. And then once I get this all expanded, I'm going to choose generative expand up here at the top. And then I'm not going to type in a prompt, but I am going to change the model. There's a brand new experimental model called Firefly Fill and Expand Beta. That's the experimental model released this month as of this recording. And now I'm just going to hit generate. And the idea here is that it does a better job for using Firefly for generative fill and generative expand. And uh, because it is a Firefly model, I do get multiple um, multiple generations or multiple variations. So there's a random hand stuck there. That one we wouldn't pick, but that one I might. And that one I might, although her hands probably aren't those hands. 
So I would probably go with number two. That's a better one of the three. And again, this is experimental. So that random hand, I would report that as, hey, there's a problem with this image. That should not be that way. But you do get the ability to to tell it that, hey, you know, this, this did not work out right. And I would fill that out later. But you get the idea. So if you want to play around with a potentially better generative expand and generative fill model, head over to the public beta, which you can download from your Creative Cloud app and try those things. But everything else I showed you is built into the regular Photoshop 2026. So go enjoy those updates as of today. Thanks for watching and be sure to, if you haven't already checked out the, the Adobe Max Keynote, feel free to go ahead and check that out, check the replay. Cheers everyone, thanks for watching. And don't forget, you've got Photoshop on desktop, you got Photoshop on the web, and Photoshop on your phone and iPad. So you can go download any of those surfaces and start using Photoshop today. Cheers everyone, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye everybody.